has been a weird, weird week. Um, so it was the the podcast festival this week. Oh yeah, how'd that go? Hot dogs festival. The hot dogs festival. Um, it was you know what I I listened to some really cool uh, panel discussions and I learned a lot. Like I was telling you about like the CBC like applying to uh, like submit episodes and that kind of thing. But it was also kind of like they tweet about you and you're on their website and they announce you before um a couple sessions with the uh, art intervention being on there yeah okay and i was just like this is going to be like you know i'm going to get more followers nope. and like i looked at the stats for listeners nothing so this week it was like one of those like i'm very very honored and i was really excited but then at the same time i was like just keep doing what you're doing and do it for the love of it and that's all you can really do. Um, I, I do think you should pitch it. It seems like it'd be CBC bait, the exact sort of thing they'd be into. Who knows? I kind of, I Every time I think I found like a good topic or theme or something for like a, like a public art thing, it just never pans out. So I don't know. This week it was like, a, it was a happy, sad week. Mm-hmm. But yeah. How about you? How is everything going? Well, uh, you know. Staying at home all week, we couldn't really go outside. Uh, Fiona and Louie both got uh, got a positive on the rapid antigen test for COVID. Don't know how we got it. Uh, Gosh. Yeah, dealing with COVID, that's been all in all okay. Uh, it was weird. I didn't feel, like I felt scared because I have a two-month-old at home mm-hmm. and I don't know how it's supposed to affect him. And a two-and-a-half-year-old, I don't know. Like Fiona and I are both like double-vaxxed and then boosted, but... Yeah, kids can't be so yeah i'm super worried about how it's supposed to affect them and we haven't been able to really leave the house and go for walks and stuff because they're both on quarantine and i have tested negative twice took a couple antigen tests have felt completely normal aside from being absolutely exhausted as usual but yeah yeah that's been our week it has been rather uneventful and then otherwise i just keep ordering stuff for the inside the house studio because i'm going to leave my my studio out here and move into the house oh and hey uh congrats to f-bomb there for the release of saga that's awesome oh yeah thanks i guess <laughs> that's what i'm calling her from now on f-bomb because i I, th- I feel like she needs like a an animal crossing type name and that's what her villagers would call her i don't know about that but i do know that <laughs> the animal crossing name you've given her is very animal crossing 100 percent animal crossing <laughs> F-bomb. sidekick f-bomb that kind of thing jam juice i'm gonna call you jam juice what do you think no like that's a terrible nickname i'll kill you and burr you under the museum you will be one of the exhibits i wish that you could murder the animal? murder the characters i you know what I, I realized the second i started saying it i was like no that's there's no good way out of that one. yeah no let's keep going here yeah me too maybe pietro isn't the bad one i wish that you could have like some conversation with them like is this really where you want to be? You seem more like a big city animal. Get on out of here, you. Just like, just get the hell out of here. And you just send them back to your save file. Yes. On the other, the other version of Animal Crossing. What was that one called? The city one. City folk. I like city folk. That's a good one. All right. So we're both low energy, uh, having weird weeks. No, I got wine. The reason I was late getting here is because we were watching a Korean horror TV show. Nice. I am drinking uh, zero sugar Coca-Cola, which I think used to be Coke Zero, but now it's called Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. I don't know why, but that's what it is now. Look at these wild and crazy Friday night guys. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I put together a uh, a Rubbermaid cart. Oh. Uh, utility cart, like a janitor's cart for our house. Um, yes. I got into 3D printing because Fiona got me a 3D printer for Christmas. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I put it all onto this cart now, so I have like a mobile printing station. Yeah, you posted those on Instagram. They're awesome. Yeah, it's fun. I printed a bunch of gyroids for Louis. They're fun. I printed them with way too much resin than I needed to. This is really dumb and dorky, though. Nobody wants to hear about my 3D printing. It's literally like, this is a show about (laughs) dorks. I'm sure someone out there is like, what type of 3D printer? Uh, It is a Anycubic Photon Mono SE. How do they come up with names for that? Uh, and then I also got the, the the washing cure as well, which is a separate machine. That's really great. Uh, I don't know. I think that company is Japanese, so I'm I'm sure something in the translation 
gets a little bit interesting. That makes sense. No, 3D printing is, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a fun community. And can you paint them? Like I, the ones that you have are really cool. And I just want to like paint them now because they look like those cool vinyl toys from like the early yeah. to mid 2000s that were super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kid robot stuff. Yeah. The stuff's still around. I, I was big into kid robot and dunnies yeah. for a while. I got. Oh, I had so many dunnies. Yeah. I mean, I'm still a big loser for like collectible toys, um, which I don't want to sidetrack us, but I have just a disgusting number of amiibos above me right now and Funko Pops and I've got a set of uh the Gorillas music band vinyl toys oh yes those are awesome I've got the uh Hot Topic exclusive variant of Ramona Flowers from the Scott Pilgrim set I've got myself a Lion Cat toy um that was done by I think it's McFarland Toys or Skybound I forget my Astro Boy yeah I've got a lot of vinyl toys and stuff It's going to be interesting marrying those with what I'm doing with the inside studio, which is a little bit more of a mature take on a space. Wallpaper and adult shelving. Mm. Yeah. That's the tough thing. Like I love collectibles, but I, my aesthetics for like wanting to look like I live in a Scandinavian spa Mm -hmm. just doesn't really marry well. Yeah. It doesn't go with my sort of uh, what's it called? Grand millennial look, which is that sort of throwback (laughs) to our grandparents doilies and shit. That's why I have a space that's just sequestered away from the rest of the house where I can just throw junky toys all over the place. Yeah, you need like a toy room. Yeah, that could be something else. No, I, I, I realize that. A little that. 50 yeah. shades of gray, yeah. I was thinking like we had a toy room growing up that was just like a really big closet where all of the toys that my parents didn't want out in their space, just everything was in there. And it was just, it was a disaster of just shit. Yeah, that's my entire house now. Uh, I think I think more more modernly they're called uh, playrooms as opposed to a toy room. Yeah. Why you got to be so dirty, Ben? Like not everything has to be like that. It was just it was for toys. I'm an adult. For children. We live in an adult world, and some things sound like sexy words. <laughs> and I'm twelve. Um. Yeah. No. And so we had ambition to keep all of. Uh, our children's toys in, in, you know, one play mm-hmm. area. And that does not work because yeah. as soon as they know how to walk, they move stuff. Yeah. They're good at carrying things. And you want to do things in rooms too. So you move stuff and you say, here, we'll just put a few of these toys in this room where we were going to keep tidy. And uh, yeah, if you want to do something in that room without holding them or having them yell at you, you, you just bring some toys along with you. That sounds good. Yeah. That makes and sense. soon your entire home is a playroom. Yeah. And it's fine. You don't even care anymore. But then, like, that's only for, like, childhood is such a short time, you know, in in, in the group, in the big picture. So you got a couple of years of shit everywhere, whatever. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, you're probably 10, 18 years, maybe. I feel like maybe by 14, they start to keep that shit in their room, maybe. I don't, my nephew, like, he's got a couple confined places in the house where he has his crap. But he's a pretty sparse kid, like, he likes video games. He likes Legos. He likes sports. Is he over 10? Uh, he's 11. Grade 5, grade 6, I feel like your sh- your stuff obsession kind of starts to dwindle. So I feel, yeah, you got like 10 years. There's also, you can have a conversation with like a 10 year old and 11 year old and, and reason with them. You can't do that with a toddler. No. Then that's what my sister said. Like the day that he was like uh, able to help like carry the garbage out and do the dishes, she was like, I've got my life back. So you know, it's, it's going to be hell for a while, but then soon you're going to have a little, some helper, helper buddies with you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I'm not huge on the whole chore <laughs> thing. I feel like that's my responsibility eh. as a parent. Their responsibility is to no. learn and grow and have fun. But part of that is like learning to care for your space and to take pride in like doing dishes and stuff. Yeah. I figured they got Just make a choice, kid. Do you want to, do you want to live in the alley or do you want to do dishes? Just throw them in the, in the alley. If you don't want to clean the dishes, you just chuck them in the alley. I'm a big believer, and I know, like, okay, I have a master's degree in education. (laughs) I really feel like the ages of, like, 13 to 15, almost 16, just let them loose. Like, let's get them out, like, digging holes on a farm or, like, whitewashing walls in factories. I don't know, like... Do you think that's what's going to happen with a 15-year-old if you let them loose, quote-unquote? Is they're going to go find industrious work to do? They're so good at, like, tasks. Like, 
I would have kids that would show up to be like, do you have any, like, do you have a job you need me to do? And I'd be like, yeah, go wash these walls. And I'd give them like hot buckets of soapy water. And they would just go like, can't you get tired for that shit nowadays? No, because it's part of like caring for the studio space. And it's like they're on like recess or whatever. And they'd be like, I don't want to go outside. Can I help you? And I'd be like, yeah, come help me clean. And they'd be like, okay. And Hmm. they're so like, their brains are just mush because of puberty. And then, they're, you know, teachers are like, why aren't they doing the work? Like, because their body is like decomposing to rebuild itself like a butterfly. But they're really good at like, you there, pick up that rock and move it over there. And they're like, gotcha. That is literally the worst description of puberty I've ever heard. And yet also feels very colorful and, and poignant and appropriate. I promise you that's exactly what's happening in their brain. It's just like it's a wash of chemicals eating away. <laughs> their yeah, brain. Your brain just disappears. It becomes a liquid. And, uh... and it molds itself back together (laughs) i I am not a physician Uh, i don't think that matters and it comes out a beautiful butterfly just like the eric carl book you have and i feel so bad for parents because they're like they were such nice kids and i'm like they're still in there's still a nice child in there they're just they're they're fighting zombies inside of their head right now just let them do their thing they will come back to you one day it's interesting because i don't remember ever having like any real angst in in my teenage years but maybe that's because I was dealing with too many external factors to have that navel. Game. Yeah, you had a lot going on. Yeah. Well, there's there's got to be an intro in here somewhere, right, Jess? Some people would say that the thing that they fear most in the world is their child hitting puberty. I think that's a secondary fear. I think they fear uh-huh. that because they didn't know to fear having the child in the first place. I know that fear. I watch you and I'm like, I don't know how he does it. I fucking love it. That's the worst part about it. I only give you the bad stories because it's nice having somebody to vent to. But then I get to pick up my little guy and cuddle him. And he says, I love you, dad. And it's beautiful. He is. Can I just say, like, on a personal note, I fucking love this sock fiasco you have going on. Like, where are his socks, Ben? He just sits next to me, whatever we're doing. And, and one of the socks comes off at some point throughout the day i love that that's like a quirk of his where he's just like i do one song yeah. and that is it. well i think it might start evolving because i noticed today he had one off for a while and then the other one joined it so i think maybe he was just looking for grip he has fallen a number of times uh trying to like pivot mid run through the house <laughs> and, and and the the soft feet just sort of fly up and he does like a cartoonish like parallel to the floor and then yeah. straight down Oh, it's so bad. I feel terrible. Like, I'm laughing now, but like, you know, lip splits, blood everywhere. He's just sobbing. I'm trying to oh. put ice on it, like give him sugar uh, because you know, that at the, same the endorphin time. rush will, will take the pain away quicker than you can give the mad or yeah. something. And yeah, just blood everywhere. And at the same time, you're like, it was, it was kind of fucking funny. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was talking to someone about this today, actually, about like kids, like, I'm not saying I want kids to get hurt, but sometimes when they like they fall or they're just going about their general life, like it's funny because they haven't figured out their bodies yet and they look like a baby giraffe trying to run for the first time. And the basics of physics or anything like that. But then the emotions that go along with that are such big emotions. Uh, Huge emotions. Uh, He's just started doing a, a voice, like his first like silly voice ever. And he scrunches up his little face and he goes, Hey, I ran have some, some prune juice. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing? That's amazing. That's the best voice I've ever heard. Fiona and I stood next to him and just kept telling him to make the funny voice all day. That terrifies me because I immediately think of Danny from The Shining. Like, ah, what are you doing? Yeah, kids are also scared. Let me throw this at you because this has come up in conversation with like my sister and some of my friends that have kids. Do you believe in reincarnation? And do you believe that kids sometimes like, you know, when they're wise beyond their years, like, is it because it's another soul in there being reborn? The This will probably not surprise you. I don't believe in much spirituality. What? Uh, yeah. No. Uh, turns out when you're steeped in indoctrinated with that sort of thing your entire early formative years and then you remove yourself from that way of thinking you are very skeptical and prefer to look at things more practically Uh, spirituality ranges in my reactions in, in the reactions it gets from me from sort of like disinterest to like 
extreme annoyance with the subject being brought up and people believing in it at all. Like I just have like no tolerance sometimes for it at all. I try to, but on a (laughs) a logical, on a logical level, I appreciate religion as a, and spirituality as an aspect of, of existence that people need and use as a tool to blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go Bill Maher on anybody and start being like, it's, uh, it's ruining the world. Like, fuck off. Like, (laughs) You know how many different religions and cultures had the opportunity to grow and mature and you want to you want to throw down on certain ones that are currently going through things like all of that, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, I don't I don't much believe in spirituality. I think when we're done, we're done. Uh, you might be able to convince me from more of a sci fi take that reincarnation could exist if we are, in fact, in a simulation. Because there's a there's a science there, a logic that we would have that sort of data recycled at some point. If we are ones and zeros on a, a disk drive in in space or something. Okay. See, I'm more of like like a like a force Jedi mm-hmm. type belief system here of like energy can neither be created or destroyed. So where does it go when you die? Right. And if we're all made up of like the stuff of the galaxy, then it's got to go somewhere. So well, sure, maybe the there's just like little parts of people that uh, disseminate out and are reborn into human form. Well, there's certainly there's certainly the matter. The matter of it uh, gets recycled, whether that carries some sort of psychotronic echo or not. Who knows? I th- I hope it does. I really like. I- there's that movie, Baby Geniuses. So uh, I think that was about reincarnation. How dare you talk about baby genius? I was going to say, "What dreams may come." One of the most hauntingly beautiful, disturbing wow. movies of all time. Oh, and you come boring. at me with baby genius. Oh, who are you? I, yeah, I you thought I knew you. Incarnation. <laughs> baby geniuses. Those babies are smart. And then they Don't get this point in their, in, their, in their infant development where, the, the, if I remember this movie correctly, which I saw once when I was like 13, uh, they hit a point in like their infant development where they suddenly become like, baby babies and forget everything but there's this beautiful chunk of time up until that where they're just insanely brilliant baby geniuses if you will and uh, it's a great movie and i think everyone should take a look at that uh but until uh then this is dork matters and we're gonna start our episode 20 minutes in Welcome to Dork Matters. This is uh, a show uh, in which a couple of uh, dorks, dork friends, dork out about dorky things, and we invite you to come uh, dork along with us. I like that. Dork along with us. Yeah. I don't think anyone wants to say that. We invite you into the dork realm, huh? The world of dork. Yeah. Yeah. Dork it. Dork it real. There's no judgment here. There's a lot of judgment here. Have you listened to our show? Okay judgment about like pop culture stuff yeah just we're just gonna dork out about stuff join us yeah. a couple of friends dorking out i am uh ben rankle i'm your dad dork and with me as per usual is lexi you're scared of the dork dork <laughs> okay yeah not bad i like it yeah okay one more take one more take i want to hear it this time a little bit more um let's say you're in a store, your customer service rep, and I want you to say it as if you're welcoming somebody into the store. Okay. And then the type of dork you are. Okay, I got it. All right, here we go. Hi there. This is Lexi Hunt, your scared of the dork dork. I liked it. I liked it. I thought that was great. That was fantastic. You're a director. Look at you. Yeah. I'm going to start directing animation and voiceover now. <gasps> Could you? You could be the director for the podcast that we'll submit to CBC. I certainly wouldn't be the first white guy without qualification to get a job. At the CBC? (laughs) At any sort of place. Just let me stroll down to Hollywood with my CV that includes being a (laughs) stay-at-home parent for the last three years. 
Hey, man. And then previous to that, graphic design and project management. Uh, and I think, I think I got a good shot. I think you do too. That, yep, yeah, that sounds qualified to me. <laughs> Go for it. I would love to do some voiceover work because I feel like it's a, it's a good second job. Like I could do it when I come home from work. I could do it on evenings and weekends. I don't think it pays well. So it would just be just, just a little off the top, you know, like I'd like to narrate nonfiction books, audiobooks. That's what I'd like. Somebody's got to do it. I'm ha- you got a book about you know psychology or like some history book about like the Peloponnesian War. I'm your gal right there. You heard it. I don't do voices. Well, you could try. I can't do them. What, we, well, okay. So I started. Do a Peloponnesian <laughs> for me and make it not racist. What is a Peloponnesian? No, the, it's like, is Peloponnesia still around? Fuck, <laughs> do I look like I know? Okay. I was going to send you this because I thought it was funny. So I started recording Wind in the Willows. I always hear people talking about polyps. Peloponnesia. It's, it's a place. Yeah. And the people that live there are called polyps, right? That's where you put the rim shot. <laughs> No? Huh? Come on, guys. <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? We are talking about our deep dork fears, but we're keeping it light. We're not talking about like the actual fears that keep you up at night. We're talking about the things where you're like, ew. Yeah, the stuff that you are maybe even a little bit embarrassed to be scared of. Um, that's silly. If you told somebody, they'd be like, what the fuck? Really? Oh, and Ben, we got some good ones from the social medias. Oh my God. There was like two where I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I'm good. I'm glad you got some. I got a, I got a few too. Um, do you want to start with uh, some of the ones that we got uh, sent to us or should we start with, with ours? How many did you bring to the table? Did you bring one for yourself? Oh, I have several for myself because I'm an anxious weirdo. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six that you consider to be silly, though. So here's the issue. I also consider myself an anxious person, Mm -hmm. but I can only think of one that I thought wasn't a legitimate thing to be afraid of. No, these are all like people look at me and they're like, what is wrong with you? All right. I want to hear something. Give me one. Okay. Number one, Band-Aids. Oh, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. What the hell's your problem with Band-Aids? They're just, okay. It's also, it's like, it's fear slash grossed out and like my gross out factor like, it's something that will, like, haunt me, and at night I'll just be like, Ugh! and just, I can't, like, a Band-Aid on a person just disgusts me so much because I know it's under there. Something gross is under there. And very rarely are- The magic of healing is gross? Because it's wet. Like, your skin gets all, like, oh, okay. squishy. All right. No, I'll give you that. Oh, yeah, it's... I mean- do you ever not just stop and marvel at the amazing ability we have to regenerate like certain wounds? That's fucking fantastic. Well, yeah, I think it's, I was talking about the butterfly juice in kids' brains. Yeah, it's amazing. Sure, yeah, good point. So band-aids help but with that. You slap a couple band-aids on a head. It's more or less like, I know you are not throwing that band-aid in the garbage. It is slipping off somewhere between now and like tomorrow. Is it in your bed? Is it on the floor of the shower? I don't know. Do you feel worse about the band-aid when it's on or when it's off? When it's off. Okay. That's, I mean, I think that's reasonable. They're gross as hell. I'm not afraid of them. I'm afraid of them because I know, like, one of my, uh, one, uh, oh, one of my. <laughs> You're oh. literally throwing up on my, love it. One of my biggest fears. The, Deep breath. Oh, there was like a TV show that we watched <laughs> once and a girl was like eating something like a, like a dish and she pulled. Uh, oh. Uh, she pulled a band-aid out of her mouth and was like ew and that like oh i'm so excited i am hoping that you throw up by the end of this episode i might like this isn't even my bad one like they get worse like even when i was writing them down i was like (laughs) okay i i appreciate where you're coming from the explanation seems reasonable to me i mean it could be worse right yeah yeah like i could hear something uh something something much dumber than that um, I've only got one. Okay. <laughs> I, pardon my, my sensitive approach to moving us off of your band-aid topic. A smooth transition. Don't go for it. It's just me dry heaving more. Does it help if they're like like fun band-aids, like children's band-aids, like a Hello Kitty band-aid or yes. something? That makes me a little bit better, but then like if it is off, like if I see it on the floor, I am... I like, I am going to purposely like look away from it, try to move away from it. And then it doesn't matter how cute it is. If it's like, if it's on a person and it's a Hello Kitty or a Batman thing, I'm good with it. 
but it's still like the the prospect that that thing is gonna fall off and like get near me just makes me like want to just dry heave and run i wanted to move on but i can't okay how long have you had this this fear um always like i i don't like as long as you can remember even when i put a band-aid on it's gross like i'm still like oh you sick gross okay I, that was coming to my next question like do you just use like like gauze and, or something instead but you use band-aids uh, you're willing to use them well i'm kind of like wolverine then in that i don't get hurt very often that i require one okay um but yeah i i definitely use them on me but i know like it, it bleh, i'm grossed out i love how you accurately uh, describe wolverine's power which is not needing ba- band-aids too often uh is that not why he's, yeah, he's the most useful? <laughs> he never needs a band aid. He's very, he's a, he's a cheap date, that one. Yeah. But I coagulate very quickly. <laughs> Don't need band aids. That's a great superpower. Oh, wow. Yeah. Join us, the X Men, as we fight evil. For, for on the cheap. <laughs> yeah. Professor X won't spring for band aids. So he's like, you're on the team. Yeah. That's like American healthcare sounds very, very expensive. So anyone that can be on the team for the cheap, yeah. Take him. Well, that's why Wolverine's a Canadian. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. So he can he can go back home and get his health care and then come back to... I'm sure Professor X offers some sort of health plan for the X-Men, right? Nah. Well, I'm, I mean, may, I, I'd like to think so. He's a billionaire. Well, what about... Okay, so what's what's your, what your fear? Your one dorky fear? Okay. I've got this one that I think is sort of unreasonable. And, and like, it's not forever. I can trace it back to when it happened, when I became afraid of that. Um, I was watching Ripley's Believe It or Not, that 90s, early 2000s TV show where Dean Cain would come out and explain uh, certain situations to you. And and some of them, I think, were were fake. Maybe not. They were usually real. Anyhow, the point was, he brought out this one guy whose face had entirely caved in because he had accidentally inhaled just a few specks of bread mold what? Uh, off of like a loaf of bread that he was opening up in his home. And he inhaled them and they planted themselves into his face and completely collapsed his like entire facial structure. And he had to wear like this prosthetic face thing that snapped into it. Um, And I have been deathly afraid of like bread mold specifically, but basically any sort of mold uh, ever since. To a point where like if I'm clearing out dishes from my fridge and I need to scoop them out because they've been in there too long, I'm like I'm masking up with a couple things on terrified just throw the whole thing out i throw it in the alley <laughs> just deal with it so i'm i'm legitimately afraid of this i i don't dry heave or anything at the idea of mold um, that's interesting but i am afraid of it and because it is a real thing that happened to a person so it could happen to me again again <laughs> not again i mean it could happen to me it is a thing that could happen to me it could happen again to somebody else and that somebody else could be me i could get mold faced I can't handle that. I think about it very often, like daily. I've got a good mold story. There's no such thing as a good mold story. I know. So one of the, um, that is, I think that's a very popular one because that was one of the DMs was that someone's afraid of mold. Oh, was it? Um, but years ago, I was working at Community Natural Foods, as I talk about all the time. And okay, I'll just start by saying moldy potatoes and yams are the most disgusting thing in the world. Like they are horrific. And one time we were going through, like, we were really, like, they have really high standards of cleanliness there. So we were constantly having to clean and look through boxes to make sure everything was, like, nice and healthy. And we found this one box and we're going through it. And um, a person lifted the lid off. And it was just, like, you could see the spores of mold coming up with the box lid. And it was, like, tasting it aloud. And he just went, (gasps) and they all, like, you could see them go inside of him. And he was, like he had to go home he had this awful allergic reaction yeah and it was just wild and like thank goodness we were like cleaning things out because be spending the next 20 minutes like forcefully like irrigating my nose and like blowing it out and like trying to like just like peroxide into my eyes oh it was wild well and that was like who would wear a mask just i'm gonna go open this box of potatoes no but now i'm always like i bet he had a worker's comp claim there that's that's not a safe work environment I mean, I appreciate that you didn't always open up boxes of moldy shit that like attacked your face with spores, but once is too much. Did I just get community in trouble? <laughs> I don't know. Nobody knows who they are. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Whole Foods. It's Whole Foods. It's an independent grocery store in a city we live in. 
Is that mold? Okay, that's that's, that's a good gross. one. Yeah, mold. Mold is like, and I feel like I have a lot, a lot of other fears, but uh, I feel like they're all reasonable, like home invasion and yeah. uh, children mm-hmm. falling downstairs. And uh, yeah, we don't need to hear how like I'm scared to walk to my car at night. Like that's just <laughs> yeah, yeah, like let's, let's be real. Let's have some fun yeah. with our scared mold. Don't want it in my face. Don't want my face yeah. collapsed. No, thank you. And I do think it's a little bit unreasonable because people deal with mold all the time. Penicillin is mold and is a gift to humanity. So. Oh, yeah. All right. Read another one and let us know who sent it in. I feel like we, we okay. have to give people credit for these. So Ainsley was the one who also has a fear of mold. So shout out to Ainsley Yay! for sharing your bacteria moldy fearness. Um, this one comes to us from Ashley, who is scared of, and I love this so much, she is scared of cardboard cutouts. <laughs> so like standees? Yes. Like if you saw, like I was going to post a picture of Mr. Bean, like a Mr. Bean cardboard cutout or Michael Michael Jordan on the old train, Kevin McAllister's house. But Ashley has told us that she is dorkily afraid of cardboard cutouts. I like that. I, I wonder if it is only human shaped cardboard cutouts or if we say cut out a rainbow, if it would freak her out. Ashley, let us know. I feel like it's a human thing. Yeah, Ashley, let us know. That's a good good question. I love that one. That's that's amazing. Isn't that a good yeah. one? Uh, okay, um, then I've got two more. Um, I've got one here from somebody whose username is Ella Loy, and uh, they are scared of balloons. <gasps> now, I think balloons are actually a perfectly reasonable thing to be scared of. I agree of. with that. That's a very common fear. I can understand. Yeah, it's common, but I can also see how it might seem a little bit silly. But... You can't tell me that blowing up a balloon, you don't close your eyes as it starts to hit that tension point, right? Like, because, you know, you know, you've got that little bit of a fear that that balloon is somehow going to become razor sharp when it snaps and like slice your throat. Open. That's not. No, I just don't like the loud you noise. You never heard that? No. You never heard that like urban thing when you were a kid in, in school? No. Oh, it was such a like prevalent one that like, oh, if you blow up a balloon too much and it pops, it can actually like hit you with such t- like force that uh, it oh can gosh. cut you like severely and there's this one kid who did it and no. his throat got slit by the- okay there was an urban myth that i heard when we were in art school and it was that uh, when you're using a lathe with metal you have to make sure that you're brushing the like the shavings and the pilings off so that it doesn't have too long of a shard because apparently at some institution where someone was doing that they weren't um, cutting the shavings down and it got picked up by the ventilation system and it was like a razor sharp piece of metal floating around the room and it like decapitated the person. That's some Final Destination shit. I don't believe it. Right? I was like, that is not a thing. But I also see the grain of sort of believability there. Like fast machine, razor sharp metal, death. That's basically how I feel about it. Maybe yeah. a severe splinter or a scratch, but probably not decapitation. I love That's that. That's great. So balloons, That's I think a, they're yeah. reasonable. Go, go. Let's see what our next okay. one is. Um, this one comes to us from Mike, uh, the, the wonderful Mike Lipsit, who is an incredible photographer and designer working out of Vancouver, BC. He says zombies, also weird or also weirdly fascinated by them and have a reoccurring dream of being chased by zombies. I love it. Um, on the one hand, zombies don't exist, so it's a funny thing to be scared of. Yep. I feel like there's a, definitely in like the 2000s a huge obsession with zombies and zombie culture thanks to the like The Walking Dead. And yeah, oh, totally. There was a guy that did that, the zombie survival guide book and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. It feels a little passe now, but being actually scared of zombies when they don't exist is such a, is a, is a very quirky fear. Are you scared of zombies? Uh, no, and that's why like I was, we were late uh, coming to this recording session because we were watching, um, what is it called? The new Korean zombie horror show called all of us are dead oh wow i love there's nothing i love more than a korean zombie horror movie or tv show it's the best it's like kingdom train to busan give them all to me i love them yeah so it's a little bit weird for me it's a little quirky but you know we're yeah. not here to shame we're just here to share no zombies thanks for sharing mike yeah i think i think we're all sick of uh that that thing that people were doing during like 2000 to 2010 or so inclusively where like every time zombies came up somebody had to like tell you about their plan to like survive the zombie apocalypse and it's like no that's not gonna happen you're gonna die you're gonna be dead in like 10 seconds yeah <laughs> we're all gonna i mean be like dead. i feel like i know myself well enough i'm a reflective person i know what i'm about i'm dead in the first yeah, way we went like, to art school we're not surviving and nobody wants us to survive. 
what skill, like, you know, no, you know what? I could build you a fire and dig you a really good hole, but I am, I'm a whiner <laughs> and people would be like, just go die. So yeah, I'm part of the first wave out. That's fine. She keeps complaining about the zombie. It's been 10 years. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd probably just off myself. I'll, I'll pass. I don't, I just, yeah, a few too many pills and just go to sleep. That's enough. Actually, except I have kids, so I'd have to take care of them. I'd, I'd be obligated to, to try to survive. We were talking about, like, uh, at Community once. I gotta stop saying the name of these places. I think it's great. I think everybody wants to know more about your time at Community <laughs> Natural <laughs> Foods here in Calgary, Alberta. Nobody cares. Did you ever shoplift? No, never. Did I've... you ever steal some organic cantaloupes? I am such a rule follower, as you know, that no, that's just not. Sure, I'm a rule follower, too. I think we're both sort of uh, Cyclops types. Oh, yeah. By the books. But that doesn't mean sometimes sometimes you get that uh, that little urge. Nah. 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 Didn't do it? Nope. Okay. Um. Did you ever pee in somebody's somebody's cereal or something? How would you go? Nothing with, bad. No, I I. That's why I'm lame. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with stuff on the cuff, off the cuff, on the cuff. What's the worst thing I've ever? I've been rude to people, well, passive aggressive and kind of shitty. <laughs> that's just a state of existence for me. <laughs> just my general disposition in nature is not lovely. Yeah, I feel like that's why we get along. We follow rules, and we're very shitty to people who maybe don't follow the rules they don't know about. There was a, a person at the store not wearing a mask and was being a real jackass about it. You know what? Like, I'm at the point where if you're not going to wear a mask, then just don't wear a mask, but shut up about it. But he was just being such a jackass to, like, the girls working at the store that I was like, I'm going to give you such side eye. Yeah. And, like, glare at you. Very good. Very good. <laughs> oh, I bet they felt I, that. I'm a savior of the people. Yeah, that side eye changed things. He went home, rethought his life. He really thought twice. Instead of putting on two masks, double masks. I don't think I've been considerate enough about other people's feelings when I'm out in public. Oh, thank God that woman gave me a, a brutal a side dank eye. eye there. Dank. All right, let's get another fear. I'm I'm scared of somebody reacting poorly to my passive aggressive uh, affronts and uh, I don't know, getting into a fight in public. Yeah, you know, that's actually a good fear these days because people are, according to the internet, people are fighting for no reason. Oh, well, the internet would know. Yeah. What's another fear we got sent in? Uh, so Jody sends us a fear that I actually share. That was one on my list too. Um, other people embarrassing themselves makes my skin crawl. And I have that fear too. Like when someone stands up to propose at a hockey game, I'm just like, oh God, no, please sit down. Sure. Like, I hate that shit. Or someone... Like if you're in a close group of friends, like there's like eight of you sitting around watching TV, you're having to chat and someone's like, hey, I'm going to sing you guys my new song. Get me the hell out of there. I hate that. It's awful. Uh, OK, I'm with you here, but I want to interrogate whether or not that counts as a fear or if that's just sort of social. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Social fear. OK, sure. Why not? Like you're going to avoid situations because you're scared it's going to happen. Where, where somebody could be em embarrassing themselves. Where the hell are yes. you going to go? You can't go like, anywhere. They're going to be embarrassing a... themselves at any moment. I'm constantly embarrassing myself because I'm unembarrassable. So I just don't, I don't care what other people think. Like you're not going to get drunk and like take off your pants in public. No, no, I'm not that kind of embarrassing. I'm a whole different kind where I'm going to talk too much about regenerative medicine and uh, transcendence and nobody cares and nobody wants to hear it. Everyone's embarrassed for me. We could live forever. I feel like that's still a fear, right? <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Scared of people embarrassing me. That, that's, that's it for me. Okay, uh, I've got a bunch more still. Um, okay. We've got Steph Girk, uh, who says puppets, like oh. any puppet. What? Can't ever watch Sesame Street. No, I'm sad for that person. You don't like Sesame Street because you're scared? Yeah, I mean, I can see the puppet thing. They can be creepy as hell. And uh, it would just take one bad experience with a puppet. I like, I totally feel this one. Um, but that said, I also love puppets like Fraggle Rocks, Muppets. Oh, like I love Fraggle Rock. I love Dark Crystal. That whole, like, no, I'm there for it. If you were like old um, ventriloquist dummies, yes, I am there with you for that. That's creepy as shit. Oh, no, yeah. ventriloquist dummies are, are wrong. And that's why they always end up yeah, like they're horrifying as monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're terrible. They're dead eyed. They clack. Yes. You don't like anything that Clacking. clacks. Clacking. Whoa. Anything that sounds like a wind chime when there's no wind. It's disgusting. Thank you. Bones rattling together. It's disconcerting. I don't know. I can feel this puppet thing. I think I appreciate that 
you know, it, it, it feels silly to you. And I could see other people maybe saying it's silly, but I personally can feel this puppy. Yeah. I think, I think they can be creepy. Um, we've got Emily Jane May Myatt, who says uh, piles of hair in weird places. Yes. I'm yeah. there for that. That was one of mine. Is, oh, you and me, Emily Jane. Yes. A hundred percent. I hate hair. That was the next thing on my list. And I have lots of exclamation marks. But for me, mine is wet hair at swimming pools. But just like hair in general is disgusting. Mm. Ugh. There's a lot of biological hair for you. And it's got, I, I'm, I'm catching a sort of a through line of like sort of um, cleanliness and, and sort of personal hygiene. I just like the thought, like it, it haunts me. Like I'll close my eyes. So it's not that you think that maybe that clump of hair is like a living creature or something. I actually started writing um, a short horror story about a hair monster at a pool and I couldn't do it because I was grossing and scaring myself too much. I couldn't finish the story. Okay. So you could imagine the idea of a hair move because that's weird. I, yeah. like, I think hair is reasonable to be grossed out by, but being scared of it to take it to that level of like, Oh, see, I feel like we need sort of a delineation between being sort of like squicked out by something and being like afraid. Cause you like, Oh, you, you seem, don't get me wrong. I ain't challenging you. You seem very afraid uh no one else can see you but me but let me tell you if you're listening lexi is lexi is physically convulsing uh, and like heaving uh just at the mention uh, of piles of wet uh, dank uh, hair because it's uh, it's like is it a little creature is how why did it come off the back of your head there is a scene from the craft yeah. where one of the bitch characters her hair starts falling out in clumps and that was when i started being like oh and that to me is like when that started what's that uh what's that sarah michelle geller uh horror where like there's the thing in the back of her head in the shower and like there's clumps oh. of hair coming out and then there's like a hand coming out or something see it's 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 a thing Either like, way, it's gross. just so disgusting yeah. completely oh it's scary oh completely reasonable uh emily jane may my also uh gave us a second one which is hot drinks in mugs that have gone cold oh now i can see not liking those but to be physically you're like not physically but you know like viscerally actually scared of that is interesting to me i want to know more i can about see that, that being sort of a silly one yeah i need to know more too yeah if it's cold and it has mold in it i'm there with you that's nasty i'm scared of it i will avoid dealing with that if i can um yeah but yeah that's an interesting one hot drinks in mugs that have gone cold. So it's, it's, it's a, a hot, so it's not a problem yeah. if it's like a soda that's in that mug. It's a problem if it was like apple cider or coffee and it's gone cold. Then it's just apple juice. Ugh. That's fascinating. I really like that one. I want to learn more about this. We might have to do a whole episode on your fear. Yeah, we need you to respond to that and tell us more. Um, I've got one from somebody named I Can't Think of a Username. Awesome. And uh, they say, saying something that came off as either stupid or inappropriate. So just sort of scared of uh, of misspeaking in social situations. Yep. I think literally everyone's scared of that. Oh yeah. But some people are like to the extreme. Like I've like I've I've worked with kids and adults who like will have like really bad stomach aches because they refuse to go to the bathroom during the day because they don't want to embarrass themselves by asking where the bathroom is. Okay, wait. I don't want to get off of this one that we just got given. I just do want to give a little shout out that says like that's a reasonable fear. I don't think you have to think of that one as silly. Everyone's scared of saying the wrong thing no, or yeah. misspeaking or saying something totally that doesn't work in public. Um, but what you just said about the bathrooms just reminded me that I used to be scared to use public washrooms. Really? They grossed me the hell out. Well, they're yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Uh, I can remember going to summer camp and just not taking a shit for a week because I would not use that facility. I would pee. I could handle that. Um, but yeah, like... No. But the twosies, no, huh? No. I'm just scared of sitting on a seat. I would... I <laughs> This is probably too much. Do it. Go for it. I used to, if I had to, if I absolutely had to use a public toilet, I would painstakingly remove like squares of toilet paper yes. and create a safety guard of at least two or three like layers before oh. I'd sit on this thing. And then I would tuck... Because you know, on, on the seats, I, they probably don't have this in um, in female washrooms, but in the male washrooms, there's always that cutout on the stalls no that's there in lady washrooms oh is it too the cutout yeah. at the front yeah uh and i was absolutely terrified of having my penis touch the porcelain in a public toilet on top of already being scared to have my ass on the seat of a public toilet i was in, like a million times worse so i just like fold over like 20 pieces of toilet paper and make a nice little cushion there 
just in case of my, my penis having to swing into the Okay, porcelain. I have several questions for you. I, just thinking about it now scares me because I feel like bacteria will just crawl onto my penis. Like the fish that swims upstream, up up the pea stream. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, question. When When the deed was done, what did you do with the toilet paper? Did you flush it or did you just leave it? No, no, you wouldn't leave that. I, I could not treat somebody else with that kind of disgusting, like, left. So here's my follow-up question. I couldn't do that. Just now. Because this is my, now my fear of, like, my fear would be that I would clog the toilet with all that toilet paper. And then I'd be standing in, like, shit water with people being like, what's going on in there? I'm like, nothing. I would be scared of that if it was, like, situationally. Like, if I had to leave and it was very busy. But there's a way out of that. You just come out and you say, fuck, somebody clogged the toilet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. That's, yeah, that's fair. It's a real easy play. And the only reason I have that ready to go is because I've had that happen before where the toilet's been clogged and I'm like, fuck, there's somebody with you out there. <laughs> what am I going to do? And like 14 year old me was like, God damn it. This toilet's plugged. I can't believe somebody left a plugged toilet. It's so gross. It's so funny how that toilet things will make people do crazy things. Like David Sedaris writes an essay about how he clogs a toilet at someone's house and he actually considers reaching into the toilet with his bare hands and throwing the turd out the window. Do you watch Sex Education Netflix? No, you've told me to watch it and I haven't done it's it yet. It's a heartfelt show. Uh, the most recent season, I can't remember, I think it's three. Uh, there's a character who clogs a toilet while the school, like the high school, is on a bus trip. Oh. And uh, yeah. he takes off his sock and he's so worried about what he's done. And somebody's outside the door pounding, trying to come in. And so he takes off his sock and he like, gets this poop into the sock and chucks it out the, like the little utility no, window at the top of the bath and it splatters on top of somebody else's windshield that's <laughs> driving by uh and they're in france and they're all these english people and so like the next scene is all these like this huge investigation like at this gas station between the teachers and this guy who's oh car is god i shit. love it and people are just like trying to discover who's who's missing a sock <laughs> so they can find out who threw shit out the window that's a Spartacus moment. Like all the teenagers should have taken off a sock and been like, it was me. There was one character who does step up and take the bullet for him. It's a Aww. nice, actually, it's a nice heartwarming moment because it shows a connection with this other character that they hadn't had previously. That's, you know what? It's That's funny and it's nice. I not recommend sex education enough. It's just such a heartfelt show. Um, it's warm. It's caring. It's sincere. I love it. And it's funny as fuck. I like it. I like all those things. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. I've got uh, a few more here. Okay. Let's hear them. I think we might as well just keep going. But let's yeah. take a quick break because I think we're due for a. Yeah. Do it. Who's that Pokemon? Do, 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 do. I'm very excited for this one. Uh, I don't have one. Do you know? You know Pokemon so well that like I don't know them well enough. I know the old school ones. Okay. I'm gonna go old school for you then. Yeah. Let's do that. Um. Okay. Imagine um sort of a. A pile of wet trash on the ground, but more like goo, like like a small jello mold, sort of triangular, sitting on the ground. And then it has two more like little protrusions coming. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. What is his name? Okay, think more of just like a a pile of like gel or goo with like two little protrusions coming out of either side, and then two black um, ovals. Or oh, is it like the the toothpaste monster one? What? Where he's got like pink shoes and he's blue and he's got like all of his little. What the fuck he looks are you like about? he looks like the flying spaghetti monster. You know what I'm talking about? No, no, it's not Tankella. Ah, <laughs> sorry. I was like spaghetti. What toothpaste? I just saw like a like a lick of like crest or something on top of a toothbrush. You know how they always do that. He looks like some toddler squished out an entire tube of toothpaste on top of like. I guess I see him more as yarn. Yeah, that's probably... It's like a ball of yarn. But like, yeah. No, no, I'm not harsh your, 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 your go at that. Tangela is still a good pull. Hmm. Okay. Um, you want to think about this yeah, a little keep, more? Yeah, keep the description coming. I got one more guess. I'll, I'll give more of a physical shape. So the shape is sort of like a triangle um, coming off the ground, and then the top is sort of wavy instead of pointed. And then off of either side of the triangle are two more little triangles that are sort of protrusions out of either side. And then there's like... Is it the B... The bee? Like the... Bee the drill? Bee. The like... No. Oh, crap. <laughs> I'm I so really bad with names of... Ah! And uh, it's purple. It's purple? It's my... Purpley, yeah. Uh, and is it sits it... on the ground. It sits on the ground. Okay, then my last guess was ruined. Uh, purple? 
What is it? No, I give up. I don't know. It's ditto. 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 Oh. Oh, come on now. I think I described that pretty accurately, don't you? No, because ditto is a piece of chewing gum stuck on the bottom of someone's shoe. That's the Pokemon. I mean, but physically, it is a triangle that has a wavy top and two other triangles poking out the sides. He is a pile of goo. <laughs> he is that's a pile of goo. A pile of I, goo. I don't think that's wrong. It was ditto. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that Pokemon. That Pokemon. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> oh, we're back <laughs> that was a dumb one you can do the next one i'm just gonna describe margaret atwood again <laughs> i like it a pile of trash is it rubbish <laughs> wearing a scarf margaret atwood she's <laughs> got wavy hair kind of looks like toothpaste on top no okay and i used to really like margaret atwood before i realized that she was a trash sorry person. oh i mean like when i was in my early 20s and read some of her books for the first yeah, time. Yeah, everybody does. Everybody loves Atwood. And didn't know anything about him as an author. <gasps> Terrible one. I mean, as a human being, not yeah. an author. All right, let's keep moving on. Okay, we got one from, uh, I can't read this, so I'm not even going to try. From somebody who says, someone tapping on the window at night. That is not a dumb no. fear. That's terrifying, and that could yes. happen. And I don't want to talk about this because I think that's one of my real fears. Yeah, that's fears like, too. that's a real fear. That's not a dorky fear. That is like some actual scary shit. I'm on the second floor and now I'm worried about that happening right you now. You have to walk back into your house. Yeah, I know. I know. Ugh, don't remind me. <laughs> I've got headphones on too, which would make it even worse because, like, did I hear that? Uh, yeah. Ugh. Okay, moving on. I don't want to actually scare myself. Um, all right, we got one from GP Daniel ninety seven. Bugs on my cereal. It is a little bit silly, but also could happen. Plausible. Yeah. So I appreciate. It. And if it ever did happen to you, you would be scared of it forever. There'd be no way to not be worried about that. Well, and do you think it would ruin some cereals for you that look oh, like yeah. they've got like little pellety bug type things in them? Yeah, yeah. Fiber one. Uh, yeah. What is that? Grape nuts or whatever. Yeah. Ugh. Rice Krispies. No, I think this is completely plausible. And, and, and like breakfast cereals are like grain. Like they're one of the first things that get like infected with like disgusting bugs. If, if yeah. things aren't clean enough or if there's a problem at the production facility, uh, it's totally reasonable fear. Oh, um, but also if you carry that and you're viscerally scared of cereals, I, I get it. I get how you think that's a little bit silly. Yeah, totally. Unless you're talking about like a, I don't know, like a fucking heracross style like hercules beetle dropping out of a of cereal then that's then just that might comical be silly. yeah that would be hilarious what's that's stuck so in scary here as shit, though. those are huge that would be super scary like one of those hercules beetles with the giant horn yeah like where did it come from i would just start going like i i would i think i would be more curious than scared that's fair um i've got one more here from friend of the show people i know um timothy winchester is his comic writing name um and he says mice i thought they were cute until they showed up in my bedroom now i can't even look at them mice is a legit fear i don't even think we can call that silly um no that's just like that's a real they're icky they can be really icky on mass but like in groups like a single mouse totally adorable love it a whole group of mice not if it runs across your bedroom at night. One one mouse is still disgusting and scary if it like skitters across your room. But there's no such thing as one mouse. If there's one mouse, there's like 50 other than the walls. Sure, and that's part of the fear, right? But like, I just mean if you see the one. Um, where I grew up in, in the neighborhood in, in Calgary, where I grew up, it's near uh, like one of the largest urban um, green spaces, I guess, in North America, mm -hmm. Fish Creek Park. Yep. Um, and so it was absolutely common and more prevalent in this part of the city for mice to leave this giant nature area uh, during the winter and go into warm basements instead, find their ways in. Yep. So, yeah, that is a thing that has happened to me. Uh, finding mouse droppings is, oh. is, makes me violently sick as well. well this, that scares me because my dad told me about the Hanta virus and how, like, if you inhale the mouse droppings, you'll just die. Oh, Totally. So it just goes back to the mold thing for me. It's just like, ugh. And then also you see those and you know they're there. They're getting into every, and they're getting into your cereal too. Don't worry about bugs. Worry about fucking mice in your oh. cereal. 
one time I bought a loaf of bread from a major grocery chain, not Community Natural Foods. Um, no, which is not a major. So it was like a major global chain. Safeway bought one of those, and I got home. Loblaws. No, not Loblaws. It was it was one. It was either Safeway or Co-op. But I got home and the bread, like I went to go like make a toast, like some toast. And the bread looked like... Make, make a, a toast. toast. As you say. I, I make a toast. Toast to my bread. But the bread had like a hole in the center of it. No, don't like where this is going. Well, I didn't find the mouse, but like I saw there were several pieces of bread and the bag had been like eaten through. And I went back to the store to show the person. And I was like, look, I don't like, I don't want to cause a scene here, but just so you know, you have mice. And he, the, the worker walked over to the bread section with me. And I swear to God, Ben, when we got there, a mouse ran across the floor and he was like, Oh my God. And then the next day I went into the store and all the bread had been moved. And there was like mice traps everywhere. It was just, Oh, so I understand the mouse thing for fun sure. fact. Any place you've ever eaten has mice. Any place you buy groceries has mice. Oh, like, yeah. It's there's no way around that. It's just a thing, part of food preparation. They're everywhere. And yeah, it bothers me too. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable indeed. That's it. I ran out of our user. Thank you to everyone who uh, who sent in your yeah. fears. Um, some of them I think we we discussed were justified. You, you don't have to feel like those are silly at all. Um, others, they are silly, but we love them. that's fine. Yeah. Those are your fears. Don't worry about it. I love it. That's great. Thank you, everyone, for sending those in. That was really cool. It's fun doing something with the uh, listeners instead. Uh, I have two final gross. Oh, you got more. Hit us. Okay. I never liked sleepovers growing up, and I would actively avoid them if possible because I have a massive dislike slash fear of teeth grinding. Oh. Because I th- I think it's disgusting. Interesting. Yourself or hearing somebody else? Somebody else. Like, if it's me, I'm asleep. Okay, so you're not worried that you're going to grind your teeth and no. it's going to bother people. You're scared of hearing someone else grind yeah. their teeth. Because all I can picture is bones. I'm going to Google this. To Google. Let's find out if there's a word for fear of teeth grinding. I forgot. This is a untapped area here. Yeah. I want to know if it's if there's a word for it, a fear for it. I keep just getting bruxism, but I want to know what oh. the, the fear word is, like arachnophobia. What would <laughs> but that be teeth. called? Toothof- toothophobia. toothophobia. Well, I can't find it, so whatever. Okay, if you fine. guys know, Let anybody know. knows yeah. what, what the phobia name is like for, for tooth grinding, I'm sure there is one. I want to know. Well, I just looked at my, my next fear and my final fear for the evening. It's called podophobia. An extreme and unrealistic fear of feet. I don't think it's feet for me. It's toes and toenails. I mean, they're gross. I think most people don't. They're disgusting. But like, I have a fear of the toenails falling off. Like to the point that I'm scared to take, like if I've gone for a really epic hike and your feet hurt, sometimes I'm scared to take my socks off. Like I'll, I'll, like, I'm so scared I'm going to take off my sock and nails are just going to fall out. Like they've all just like chipped off um, as I've been hiking. That's Ugh. not really how they work, but I, uh, that's funny. I like that one. It's interesting. Well, and then I knew this girl who was like a hardcore marathon runner and she like, she ran Ironman. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. But she said that for really, really intense runners, that's very common for their toenails to fall off to the point that some runners will actually have their toenails removed. And yeah. so she did that. And Come I was like, on. what do you do in this, in like, in sandal season? She's like, I just paint the skin where the nails used to be. And that made me want to die, Ben. I lie awake at night and think of that. I'm going to too now. Thanks a lot. That's awful. I'm <sighs> sorry to people who do that. If that's really necessary and common, but I don't want to think about it. I think it's wrong. You shouldn't mutilate yourself for running. <sighs> Maybe we just do away with running in general. I like running, but most people don't. And it sounds like it's been taken to extremes. I think it's time to get rid of running. What about just a nice walk? A little saunter. Yeah. Why can't people go for walks anymore? Just just take a stroll. Look at things. Um, you just you just piqued one of my other fears, which is occasionally uh, when I look up into the sky at night, I don't look at the stars. I look past them. 
and I start to feel like I am falling out into space and I get freaked out about the idea of falling out into space and just falling forever. I feel like that's a... Um, and I'm not sure if it's astrophobia exactly, which is a word I knew already and didn't just Google, or if there's a different name for that sort of specific idea of falling off the planet into space forever. I think that's something common because like something um, Bob McDonald talked about in one of his uh, radio episodes um, from CBC. Of Quirks and Quarks? Of Quirks and Quarks. And I heard him speak live a couple times and he talked about that. National Treasure, Bob McDonald, Quirks Isn't and Quarks. Oh, he's amazing. For uh, astronauts? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody else about it. And uh, specifically, no astronauts. You'd be surprised ah, how on, few astronauts I know. I know. It, it seems like I'd know a lot. Um, <laughs> but I don't. So yeah, just sometimes like laying on the grass, you know, people do, or like just staring up at the night sky. I, uh, yeah, I lose myself. I don't look at the stars. I look past them and I just think like, oh shit, I'm about to, and I get the same sort of sensation you do when you're standing at too tall of a building looking down. Like you're going to, not that you're going to jump, but that you're going to fall by accident and just go. That tingle sensation. There is a word for that. It looks like you're like scrotum suck up and your entire body go like this and shrink in. I don't know what it's like to have uh, my scrotum stuck up inside of my body. Try to have some empathy here and step outside of your own situation for a second. And imagine a scrotum and what it would feel like if you got scared of falling into space. I want to know what that word is like. That's that's a common thing. Like John's talked about it where it's like, if um, like a train is coming, your body's like, just run really quick in front of it. Or like if you're looking off a high building, there's like a voice in the back of your head that's like, jump. Oh, weird. I don't have those. Oh, the ones where you like do the thing that could hurt you, step in front of that car. Yeah, but not like, not to hurt yourself, but it's, oh, this is going to drive me crazy. All right, look it up, bring it back. That'll be our thing that we think about this week. We'll take it back next episode. So yeah, I've got that weird space feel. I also decided to look up what it's called if you're scared of inhaling mold. And it's uh, that's a it's thing. called mycophobia. And it's, I guess, yeah, it comes from like mushrooms, fungus, and mold being scared of oh, inhaling. Okay, that's, that's a, those things. That's a good fear. Well, I guess that's it for us. Let's try not to fall, in, fall off into space this week. Or breathe in mold. Or breathe in mold or any of the other fucked up things we talked about hopefully you've had a you've had a fun little laugh at uh at some of the silly things people can be scared of uh less positive scenario would be if you're suddenly scared of a whole fucking slew of new things sleep well <laughs> just a new cornucopia of fears for you yeah hopefully you're listening to this at night in the dark with your headphones in and uh what's that uh oh. What's that sound I hear? I don't, yeah, I, don't I was going to say, like, you're the one that has to walk oh, in the I dark just scared now. myself. I shouldn't have done that. Fuck, I freaked myself out. Okay, one more to go out on. I just realized I'm scared of ghosts and ghost stories. Oh, Can't do it. You're scared of ghost stories? Yeah, I know. After all that, like, fucking brash talk up at the beginning of the episode where I'm like, Re- I don't believe in supernatural yeah. stuff and, like, spirituality, ghosts are a whole nother matter. Ghosts, ghosts, ghosts freak me out. The idea of ghosts but maybe out. some ghosts are nice. Maybe yeah, are, some maybe, of them are like... Maybe they're not. I don't want to see a friendly one or an unfriendly one. But like being friendly doesn't make you fucking better. You're still a ghost. I do not want but to see you... that's not their fault. I do not want you to be involved in my reality and to break that reality for me. The reality where you don't exist. and I don't, the, the idea of a ghost just fucking freaks me out seeing one. But that's a real fear, not a funny fear. Maybe it's funny Yeah, I was going to say else. like that's a... That's going to be our next uh, podcast series, uh, Ben and Lexi, Ghost Hunters. Ghosts of, Ghosts of Alberta. Actually, that's like, <gasps> I like that idea. Ooh, but I would be, be scared good. the entire time. Like, fucking just that's why I want to do it, because I'll be like, ooh, let's go here. And you'd be like, mm, I don't want to. I actually love this now. Maybe we need to do a Ghosts of Alberta side <gasps> series. Yes, 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 yes. Are we research and visit? I would love that. Ghost, to some ghost towns? Visiting might be hard right now because it's COVID, but you know, at least researching and talking yeah. about. Yeah, and there's some like there's some ghost towns in Alberta that you can go to because they're outside and they are ghost towns, and you can just like go visit them. Oh, there's tons. Let's there's do tons that. of old mining towns and stuff. Yes. And interesting history too to some of them. Like, I'm gonna not get all the details right, so I'm just gonna end this quickly. But there used to be an entire town that was settled just by um, Black Canadians. Mm-hmm. that is gone now um through like attrition but also sort of like political maneuvering to like not give them resources and not help them build out not give them government aid and stuff like that so i, I forget the name of it but that was an interesting thing to was that about. in alberta 
I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Way long time ago. Uh, way long time ago way long okay, time ben, ago we have to do this podcast series i'm serious ago. we're doing it we'll think about it. if you guys want us to do that let us know send yeah. us some comments emails whatever um yeah and uh thanks for listening uh and uh you know don't you be afraid of the dork that's a good way to go out i like that All right. good night or good day i don't know when the fuck you're listening to this yeah if we're not the boss of you yeah listen whenever you want uh, bye. Thanks for listening to Dork Matters. If you like the podcast, subscribe, give a rating, and tell a friend about us. If you are a fellow dork and have a dork issue that you think we need to discuss, tell us on our social media. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also check out our original art and other content from Ben and myself. We'd like to say a big thank you to Yabra for the use of our theme song Dance off of their Astral EP, as well as a thank you to Jess Schmidt for producing and editing our podcast. Thanks, Jess. Dork Matters. This podcast is created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Nations, which includes the Sixiga, the Bigani, and the Gaina. We also acknowledge the Stony Nakoda Nation, Sutena, and Métis Region 3. Dork Matters is a proud member of the Alberta Public Radio Podcast Network.